Welcome back to the show that will have you reaching for a towel to wipe the cold sweat of embarrassment from your face as we show you the most cringeworthy things of the 80s as voted for by you, the British public. To understand how 80s mobile phones came in at number 11, just imagine having to take a call on one in front of your friends. For over a hundred years, the telephone remained firmly wired to the ground. Tomorrow's world came on and they said, one day, everybody will have their own phone number. And everyone was just like, what? The idea eventually is once you'd been allocated a telephone number, you'd keep it as your personal number for the rest of your life and carry your phone with you everywhere. You've got to remember this is a time when, at home, I, you know, my dad had the key to the phone and he had to ask them to like use the phone and it was all that kind of... And if you got a phone call, it was a big thing. When you've got your dodgy knee and you ring the surgery, she's out. But she's in when she's out. Dr. Rowe surgery. They were huge, huge, great, monstrous bricks that people weren't embarrassed to carry. When you've got a leaky home and you run the dog and bone, he's out. But he's in when he's out. Hello? Can we call Dad, please? You can call for the phone from an old telephone. They're in when they're out. When you use it, you had to pull the aerial up, which came out about this high. So you'd be holding this thing. And the jokes are true. I mean, you could weight lift. You could do your biceps with this thing. And in fact, often when we're out filming, we used to use the mobile phone to either prop the door open or prop the door closed because it was very useful. It was incredibly, incredibly heavy. I was sat in a train carriage with this mobile phone and the whole carriage is staring at me. And somebody came up to me and said, is that a phone? I said, yes, it's fantastic. I'm talking to my husband. And they went, where is he? I said, Newbury. And they went, but that's 80 miles away. I said, yes, isn't it great? I had a friend with a mobile phone, which was a suitcase. I mean, it was absolutely enormous. Right now, there are dozens of people trying to sell mobile telephones. But there's only one mobile phone that fits neatly into your pocket. It allows you to move from car to car without installation. XL Pocket Phone. I bought something called the XL, and the XL cost the thick end of 2,000 quid, and I couldn't believe what it did. It was so wonderful. The XL Pocket Phone. The smallest, most advanced cellular phone in the world fits your pocket. Now, of course, we can't do without them. But back in the day, you look ridiculous if you had a mobile phone. If you show film of those brick-like mobile phones, everyone falls apart. Because it's like a Dom Jolly routine, isn't it? To have had a very large phone is the ultimate embarrassment because obviously now the weenier your phone, paradoxically, the more powerful you are. If you showed a kid today what the mobile Zen looked like, they'd be like, What are you doing with that madness, man? What are you doing getting in my face with that mobile? That's not mobile. What are you seeing, man? It's got video. Can you take films with it? That's what the... You speak into that? Get away, man. Believe. My lad's four, that's how he speaks. Kicking off the top ten. He was an antiques dealer and an interesting little boy, to say the least. James Harry's had you all squirming in your seats. Let's meet this infant phenomenon, young James Harry's. I do remember James Harry's appearance on Wogan, and I mean, like everybody else, I must have went, oh my God, I mean, you know, because he was such a little Lord Fauntleroy. Any child who is so grown up obviously stands out because it's just frankly weird. Have you studied it a long time or what? Well, antiques always should have wear and tear. And they always used, used to have... Um, they always should look old and they always should talk to me. Clearly James Harry's was always a rather funny little boy. He was on purportedly as God, because he's a kind of child antiques expert and that's an interesting thing. But ultimately it was it was just a kind of freak thing. Strange and cute and odd and I wonder if he was happy inside. Now James, I've always admired somebody like you as an expert in anything and at 10, what you're going to be like when you're 20, I can't imagine. And it's one of the great prescient phrases of all time when Terry Wogan says, well, <laughs> Ah, well, if you like this at 10, what are you going to be like in another 10 years? 
Yeah. Let me stop you right there, Terry. I don't think it's astonishing that I wowed so many people. I used to look at it and cringe because obviously now I'm a woman and it and then I was a little boy, and it's a big change. What gives you the urge to buy these antiques? Do you get a sort of feeling which tells yes. you, this is by me? I get an instinct. Yes. And um, when you have to, when you're looking for an antique, you just always look for wear and tear. He didn't appear like a child. He appeared like, you know, some sort of 50-year-old midget, in a way, because that was the way he behaved. Everybody regarding my antiques thought I was either a 30-year-old midget or somebody from out of space because these things were actually believed in the 80s. And I had people ringing me up saying I was the second coming. James, a little dicky bird tells me that you are going to open your very own antique shop. Is that true? Yes, and I've designed it how I want it. Exactly what you're going to do? Yes, and um, I've written a book. A book? Yes. For, especially for children or for yes. grown-ups? Um, grown-ups and children. He was a cute little connoisseur, and he was a cute little dealer, and he knew about antiques, and antiques were absolutely key aspirational thing of the 80s. People loved me in the 80s because I had curly hair, I looked like a cherub, yet I spelt like Margaret Thatcher, who wouldn't love that. He terrorised kids and nauseated adults with his wacky outfits and his wackier face. You voted Timmy Mallet officially the ninth most embarrassing thing of the 80s. Timmy Mallet is a knob, but he's a very rich knob because he was the man who came up with the Wakey 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 Club. Well, my memories of Timmy Mallet are pretty simple, really. He's this bespectacled goon who used to wake me up in the morning telling me it was great to be wide awake. And I was sitting there thinking, no, it's seven o'clock. I don't want to be awake. Go and annoy someone else, will you? Well, Timmy was just crazy. Timmy was just mad. He really is mad as a hatter. What was Timmy Mallet all about? I don't know. I'd ask Timmy Mallet, personally. I think he was on a very strong course of analgesics. Now, this is the show your telly was made for. Well, I remember of Timmy Mallet with the massive glasses, which were obviously stolen off Dame Edna Everidge, and he used to wear Bermuda shirts all the time, and he used to have this mouth that sort of went around all over the place like a cartoon mouth. Yeah! Pa, stick it up your jumper. It is a go wacker day, a good go 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 wacker day this morning. You all know that if someone thinks that wearing a silly shirt gives them a personality, <laughs> you're onto a loser right there. The eighties really were his decade. Remember on TV AM, it was floundering, and they got Roland Rat and Mallet's Mallet. <laughs> Here we go. Mallet, spell out a word association game where you mustn't pause or hesitate, repeat a word or say a word out like otherwise, of course, there will be a bashing ahead a bit like this. <laughs> or it could be like this. We're not sure. But anyway, uh, we'll count for the magic word coming up. Who's going to say it? We'll wait and see. But the first one... Oh, look at each other and go, Blair. Blair! We'd all reenact it when we were in the playground or, you know, when class got boring. You know, always getting in trouble for just whacking someone over the head with the pencil case. But, you know, if it's on TV, if Timmy Mallet's doing it, then obviously you're allowed to do it. So let's have goat. 